Hello everyone, I'm Tim from Tim's PC and I build custom PCs to suit anyone's needs or budget. Also live stream my builds and repairs for transparency and educational purposes. So if you'd like to get an awesome new PC and you'd like to see it get put together live, send me a message today. Alright, so we're back here again tonight and we've got more diagnosing and repairing fun. So this is from this is from a guy, another young young teenage guy, builds his own PC, and uh, for the most part, looks like he's done an okay job of it, putting it all together. But he he's had nothing but problems. It's always hard talking to the customer specifically about what their problems are, unless they're like pretty much unless they're a tech like me, then they're gonna it's going to be a little bit of a, a language, a little bit of a language barrier, sort of like we speak two different languages. So I've, I tried to sort of ask the customer a few different things, mainly about memory and um, just what things that they'd tried already, what sort of things were, were happening. It sounds like he was, he's, he's been complaining of like the, the screen going black and just things not working quite right. So he's already spent quite a lot of money on this because he's already bought a new power supply and he already bought a new motherboard to, to, because he thought that that was definitely the problem, but then he's just kept having problems with it. Problem after problem after problem after problem. And so then, you know, his mum calls me up and, and she's... She's feeling real bad for her son because, like, you know, he's put a lot of effort into this. His friend, if his like other friend at school's built a few PCs before as well, and was helping him out with it, and they can't figure out what's wrong with it. And I was just like, look, you know, when you build PCs, and you, if you if you're not um, if you're not like a PC tech guy with a whole heap of spare parts just lying around can be a little bit tough to work out exactly what your problem is because essentially um, you know we we work out we work out what's wrong with it by you know swapping the part out and testing it on a different system and vice versa swapping those parts other parts that are known to be working into this PC to see what happens so you know there's there's quite a there's quite a you know quite a lot of back and forth there in actually diagnosing it properly and the problem is if you if you don't diagnose it properly you'll end up spending like another thousand dollars on power supplies and motherboards unfortunately I'm not trying to I'm not trying to rip any shit on anyone I'm just that's just a fact so let's have a quick look at what we've got here so I believe this is a, a Ryzen 5000 system Oh, we got the power cord. Um, I always hate that because because oh, I always tell customers to never give me any cords because it just makes things simpler. Then you'll get home and you'll be like, oh, I don't have the power cord, and then I feel really bad. And it's like I've got like fifty here spare for you, you know. Let's tie it up. And I'll leave it there so I see it. Okay. So it looks like we've got an RTX. Looks like a 3080 in there. MSI. Probably the, the Gaming X. That Gaming X Trio or whatever they call it. Got a big chunky Corsair air cooler there. We got four sticks of Corsair RAM in there. Oh, there was a click there. Yeah. Hey Richard, how you going? Good to have you with us. So first off here, if you just joined us, we're diagnosing this PC. It's been bought bought to me by 
uh, a young guy and his mum. Um, he's been trying to put it together and trying to diagnose the problems that he's been having. He's bought new motherboard, new power supply and still hasn't made any difference for him. So, look, I think to start with, as always, we'll start by turning it on and seeing what we see. Now, I've, I work on PCs all the time and I've been doing it since I was, you know, since I was old enough to do it. And one thing I've learned in that time is that you never ever assume to know what the problem is. Always look at the system from the perspective of you don't 100% know what is wrong with it. Alrighty, let me just disconnect my monitor. So we haven't posted Yeah, what's up? Hey Richard, how you going? Is that two Richards on YouTube? Yes. Oh no, that's that's terribly <laughs> confusing, isn't it? That's why I added the last name to that one. <laughs> I'm glad you noticed. Okay. What happens if I plug it in the diagnostic speaker? Will I get any indication? So I've got an Aorus motherboard. I'm surprised I don't see any lights. Like post. Oh, there we go. <laughs> beep, 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 beep. Bit, 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 bit. So that was four. So four is usually something wrong with our display. Pretty sure that's that's what four short because you got short and longs. Bit like bit like Morse code. Yeah, bit, bit, bit. <laughs> So I think, I think what we'll probably do is we'll start to diagnose this by first plugging in our graphics card onto another system. So out comes the test bench. So the test bench has a Aorus, sorry, a Tough Gaming X570. I'm looking at this heatsink here that's borrowed from another board. And we've got a 5600X. The only little quirk about this particular 5600X that's on this is that it's actually missing a couple of pins on the CPU. So it only works in single channel mode. So we can't really, we can't really like you know, I can't really like sell this 5600X to someone because they'll be, you know, feeling pretty ripped off buying a CPU that only works with 
one channel of memory. That's the anti-sag bracket. Okay. So yes, we got the Ventus X3. So not the not the gaming X, the Ventus. Okay, so plugging two power connectors. So each of these eight pins can put out basically up to 250 watts of power. And it's actually technically called a 6 plus 2 pin connection. Alright, so what we're going to do now is we're going to see, we're going to confirm that our graphics card is functional. Now, if you've got a graphics card problem, it's it's not like, it's not like, um, you know, if you, say if you're having a problem in Windows, right? It, it very well it very well could be a graphics card problem but it's far more likely if you've got a graphics something wrong with the graphics card it'll either only fuck up while you're gaming or the thing won't even turn on at all okay so we'll plug it into our power supply we're we even going to be able to power it. We've only got a 650 watt power supply in here. <laughs> now, nah, plenty of juice. 3080. And do you want to share the screen if it's not already shared? Okay, and we're we're straight in to the test bench. As you can see, I've Oh, what's happening here? Hey, that's alright. Oh, I think we're on to something pretty quickly. Look at that. Mm-hmm. 
Okay, so we got into Windows then. It was looking okay. The driver updated. And then we went straight to a black screen. Now we're back on. Back on in BIOS. And the screen. We've lost the screen again. So I would I would be guessing that this is the issue that the customer's been having. Mm. So Okay, so crashed again with the black screen, so that's pretty consistent problem with our graphics card. So this will be this will be a warranty job, most probably. We'll do a little bit more sussing out. So first, let's make sure there's nothing weird going on with my test bench. I mean, I'd like to assume that it's all fine, because it's my test bench and I've tested it, right? But, let's be doubly sure. Okay, so got Windows recovery up so even Windows is like oh something's something's amiss okay Alright, so this isn't really meant to run heaven. This is a very, this is not a gaming graphics card. So it's going to run like really, really, really poorly, but that's not the point of this. So yeah, as you can see, we're, we're in here running heaven. I'm not going to subject you all to that on a GT710. But nothing wrong with our test bench here. So we can go and shoot her down. And...
we'll move back over to our first PC. PC with the problem. And while this isn't, this is certainly no replacement for your 3080, this will give us an idea what we're dealing with. Because if we do have a bad graphics card, by swapping out the graphics card, this thing should post straight away. And so, yeah, as I, as I said about the diagnostic speaker, when you plug one of them in, if you get the four beeps like that, that's typically a graphics card related problem. Alrighty, so let's fire up the first PC. And I'm going to be expecting a post. It's looking like a post. So I don't know if this worked for him for a little bit. Maybe, maybe not. I mean, if he's gotten a new motherboard, is it pretty safe to say that we can rule out the motherboard as being any having anything to do with this? I think it's pretty safe to rule that one out. I'm thinking at this stage, it is definitely a graphics card. It's one of the more less common faults. It doesn't like display windows okay and um, you know crash when you go into a game. This just like crashed from just trying to run windows. So we haven't even like we haven't even pushed a lot of power through it, utilized all its VRAM and stuff like that. We haven't really put it to work and it won't even, it's not even sort of standard. So let's just make sure everything else is seemingly working with this PC. But I'm thinking everything's all good. But yes, looks like a dead 3080 warranty repair or replacement. Okay. Alright, so I wanna I wanna definitely make sure the rest of the system is is functioning normally. 
So I'm going to set up Windows here quickly. I'm going to install the drivers and firmware for it. Then I'm going to run, do a bit of a Cinebench run, and then I'm going to move on with the other systems that I've got to deal with tonight. And we'll see how it's going after a bit of a Cinebench run. Make sure it's all functioning normal because I, I from what I could tell from, from these guys, they were pretty they were pretty stressed out about the whole thing. It's a lot of money and when you're an amateur and you, you're just like, holy shit have I fucked it. And and I completely understand I completely understand that because uh, I'm actually I'm self-taught, so I actually have had I've had some bad failures. Like I've made some mistakes when I was a young kid learning. Luckily, people learning right now. It's a it's a, it's an easier world that we live in now. Strictly diagnostic. Oh yeah, it's horrible, the, the earthquake. Mm. There's nothing much you can do about it though. Okay, so let's have a look here. How's everything looking? We've got a Ryzen 9 5900X, which is a 12 core 24 thread CPU. We've got a X570S Aorus Elite, so the revision X570. Good, good. Memory, 64 gigabytes. Fuck me dead. What are you planning on doing? That's my little graphics card. Look at that, 28 nanometers. <laughs> so CPU is behaving itself under load. 
not looking like we'll have any problems there. Memory's fine. Oh. Yeah, we don't really take much care of the website. And Tyler says the website doesn't work. Oh, it should be, because I paid that. It's not even me. It's dot AU. Oh. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The fuck? I paid them. See, we'll see about that. It could just be an it could just be a temporary error as well. Okay, well look. Everything seems to be fine. It's just that graphics card. So I'll get it running some Cinebench, I'll leave it off, I'll leave it sort of running and to the side and we'll keep going with some other stuff because we do have a new PC build coming up but I've got a, I've got a couple of other little bits and pieces to do as well. So yeah. Dead graphics card. So, hopefully you got it at a, you know, for a reputable retailer. Umart or Scorptech or someone like that. Um, and if, if it is the case, bring it back to them sooner, sooner rather than later. And explain to them the, the fault. You can get them to watch my video as well, if you want, if you want to show them what, what happened. This live stream will stay up. Hopefully the test bench won't need to come out again tonight. Because the next thing we got is this PC from the other night that was doing a disco ball type effect. Oh. So we can't even get, can't even get the same power supply because they don't make that model anymore. So we've got the, we've got an equivalent one here. So this is the, this is the Inwin one. It's got a five year warranty, 80 plus gold and 750 watt. Outside. Mooney, come on. Outside. Mooney, come on. Outside. 
Ugh, oh, she's got dogs, man. Eight dogs. So if you want a dog, hit me up. I got dogs. They're ready in just a couple of weeks. They're four and a half weeks old, so they're just, they're kind of just at the stage now where, you know, they're, they're kind of walking around in a, in a larger enclosure, I guess you'd call it. They're very cute. Okay, so I don't know why it's taken so long just to restart. Windows sometimes does that. So, yeah. That one, that one there that we just got, it, it's the 3080. It's the X3 Ventus. And yeah, it's faulty. It works for it works for the first few seconds and then basically as soon as it starts to heat up, it's it's dead pretty quickly. And so that's been completely stressing out these poor people for I don't know how long they've been dealing with this. There we go. It's finally doing something.
Okay, so just need the CPU power cable. Alrighty, so this PC is all ready to go. Actually sent this customer a message letting him know it's all ready this afternoon. Just because I knew he wouldn't be able to get around this afternoon. So I definitely don't forget. Now one thing I noticed on the back here is it looks like he's got a damaged Wi-Fi antenna. Let me have a look. Yeah. Hey Nick, how you going? Good to have you with us. Um, yeah. A 3080. 70. 70? Oh, they should still be around. Yeah, this will work. 
just stuck some magnetic adhesive on the bottom there. And we'll get rid of our snapped aerial and we will replace that with another. So we just got the three fans there on the front. It's pretty much all this system needs. It's actually in a dusty environment. And so in a dusty environment, we don't want to add any extra fans that we don't need. Even if that means that our airflow is not as good and the system runs a little bit warmer, that's preferable to then to letting more dust into the case. You know, it's like letting dust into the case is one of those, you know, like real annoying things. Like, you know, like, you remember in, in primary school, you get told you have to do the right thing. You remember hearing that? that you, you got to do the right thing. Put your rubbish in the bin. Don't run on the concrete. Do we all remember that? Do we all have fond memories of that? <laughs> Doing the right thing. <laughs> Alrighty. So that one's sorted. Let's start stressing this one out a little bit. Oh, do I not have Cinebench on here? We'll fix that. Oh, don't worry about it. Call her bluff. She ain't. What, what, what suburb is this? Thornton. Oh, fuck off. This is young. Fuck off. He's growing pineapples and stuff like that. Fuck he's off. Using, um, premium go and, go he's and take her to court. He's using um, premium grade kitty litter. Like, not even used kitty litter as like a drainage thing. Yeah. For his plants. And she's complaining that it's coming onto her yard because of the chain link fence and she's like complaining that he's dumping doing illegal dumping and stuff like <laughs> yeah, that. illegal dumping yeah oh, i don't know and like he owns the property and stuff like that and she literally stands at her fence screaming to the top of her lungs <laughs> and he's like an older bloke on a pension and he can't afford a lawyer so he's like going to facebook to get like support nah fuck that the fuck that like what the hell that's but... no that that won't go to court anyway man are you serious that's dealt with with litigation sorry not not litigation um mediation mediation it's when they say oh we, the, the matter was settled out of court that's that's what happens to that that's just stupid if someone threatening your neighbor because he's got pineapples growing along the side of the fence and he's used he's used some premium kitty litter around them to keep them dry because pineapples don't like wet feet <laughs> and she's complaining that some of the kitty litter has gone onto her side of the lawn and she's threatening to sue this old dude. Yeah. In Launton. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. what I said, she's Karen. Fuck off. I got friends in Launton. <laughs> I know the area. I grew up on the north side. Okay, how are we looking there? Sweet. Okay, so we're just going to let this one, let this one run.
So finally, I have a buyer for my PC. Yay. Oh that yeah. That's fine. But I feel so sorry for him. The neighbor, that is. And so all we're doing to this I guess it can get a bit of a wipe down as well. I mean, it is used, but still, you get it. it should should be it should be like clean. You don't want a PC with the other guys' freaking dust all over it. You know, a little bit of dust. Yeah, okay. It's a used PC. It's going to have some dust. I hate getting these heat sinks on the M2 sometimes, especially when the thing's standing up. It's a lot easier to do it while the thing's lying down. I'm starting to wonder whether this is actually the right the right cover for this. No, it's not even the right one. 
it looks like it should be the right one but it's not I mean it doesn't really need it it's just for aesthetics oh. It's going to be fluffy now hair on it. Yes. Unfortunately. It's very fluffy. If I let everyone know. Try to remember that man, Karen, that had a cry that there was cat hair in his PC. Uh, we call them chads. Sorry if we, you know we don't chads. we don't we don't call we don't <laughs> we don't speak about them anyway. <laughs> Okay. This one's pretty sick. internet no she has she's just lying down around the side yeah sometimes you can't she's pretty good alrighty there's our second SSD So this one will be ready to ship out. Where's it going? Uh, Melbourne, I think.
and finally we've got our new PC board. Yeah, but I mean, he's using the uh, Lee fans on the Corsair case. The Corsair case he's plug got on a Corsair Facebook. cooler, though. No, it's a Leon Lee cooler. No, it's not. No, that's a Leon Lee, babe. Maybe it's too, sorry. <laughs> All righty, can we, are we back to full screen? Yeah, I've already done that. Oh, you've already done that. Okay. So here's our main event for tonight, which is a new PC build. So this one here, it's yeah one of the last th new 3080 systems. PNY, a heap, a heap of PNY 3080s rocked up um, not too long ago, within the last week or so. So there's a few more 3080s available new, but yeah, they're going to get... They're going to get few and far between. Oh, <sighs> that looks like a fun ride. It reminds me of the wipeout. Yeah, better one. <laughs> she says more intense, and I'm like, yeah, better one. <laughs> Okay, so we've got a Ryzen 7 5700X, we've got an ASUS Prime B550-A Wi-Fi motherboard, a 1TB NVMe SSD, a 4TB, I believe, hard drive, a um, 3200MHz CL16 32GB kit of memory, or is it a 2GB? I can't remember. No, it's only a 2GB. We have the aforementioned PNY RTX 3080. We've got a Thermaltake GF3 power supply. We've got a Corsair Hyper, sorry, a Cooler Master Hyper 212 cooler. I'm going to be putting in an Antec uh, Farrah 312, I think it is. No, sorry, the Farrah H1M. Always get them mixed up. <laughs> So, the only other thing we're going to add, I'm going to chuck in a couple of RGB fans there on the front. So, you made a dump on What are you looking at? That looks like a tasty chicken or something. It's bread. Bread. Well, now it's not looking as tasty. <laughs> it's basically dump dumpling. Kind of got more, it kind of got slightly more edible then <laughs> in my mind. It's like pizza dough soaked in veggie stock and then pan fried. Why? Pizza dough is okay on its own. <laughs> I remain unconvinced. <laughs> it's a cute little box. Yeah, 
Piper 212 cooler. Very nice. Ooh, it's pretty sticky. much the best value air cooler that you can get. Alrighty, so boom. Make sure we get our AM4 CPU plugged in properly <laughs> after the other day. Not me, it was it was a it was a repair diagnosis and repair from another company. Got our 32 gigabytes of a memory. About a gigabyte of RAM should do it. Go look that up on YouTube if you don't know what the reference is. Oh, there'll be a lot of youngsters that have no idea. Oh yeah, what there will be. There about. will be. There'll be heaps of young kids who don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. They'll be like, is he trying to pull a dad joke? And he kind of is. But he's kind of not. It's not a dad joke. It's the ignorance of that fucking film crew or the script writer. Had no fucking idea. Alright, so we're going to install an offset there. Oh, in the back of my iFixit screwdriver. Fucks up. I just th I think they're fine for home use, but they're not fine for commercial use. Yeah, I, I would... Because with tools, with tools, with tools, you've got commercial grade tools, and then you've got like tools for around the house. <laughs> tools for around the house. <laughs> Getting things done around the house. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Alright, so we've got our NVMe SSD in the bottom slot there. That will leave the top slot completely open. And you might be asking, why is that? So the, the reason is so that the customer, if they want to install another M2 drive, they don't have to go digging for it. We'll just hope it doesn't fail on them, because then they will have to go digging for it. But no, typically you don't touch your, your Windows drive, and so that's going to have Windows on it. So we'll put that one in the slot that's covered up by the graphics card, and then we'll leave this top slot accessible. So if we want to add another M2 SSD to the motherboard there, say if we've got like a spare one that we're swapping between different computers, that can be like the swap in and out slot at the top there. Um, also, just if you've got another computer and, you know, say you want to wipe it and you want to copy all the contents over to yours, it's nice to have that free slot there that in a nice accessible spot. Okay, so that's all sorted. Now we can look at the cooler. So what we've got here is the Hyper 212 LED Turbo ARGB cooler from um, from Cooler Master. And so if you if you have been kind of living under a rock in terms of like air coolers and stuff like that, this is your price to performance king for uh, for a CPU cooler really. It doesn't really get much better than this. The amount that you're spending, what you're getting on the cooler um, versus how well it cools CPUs, you really can't go wrong. This cooler here with the two ARGB fans, you can pick up for about 70 Aussie dollars or less. There's ones that are cheaper that don't have the, the RGB fans on them as well, bringing that down under the $50 mark. And you're not going to get better CPU cooling, like for, for, for the dollars that you spend, 
without going really, really, really expensive, really high-end coolers. So if you've just got something like a 5700X, which is completely fine um, with a cooler like this, you can go, go ahead and get away with your cheaper cooler and save yourself a heap of money. And so once again, if the customer's budget is, is like a certain amount, they want they want certain things, certain specs at a certain price. If we can't afford a good quality all-in-one liquid cooler with a five-year warranty, this is generally the, the sort of cooler we go for um, as a substitute. And so you can look online, Linus, Linus Tech Tips. Remember, remember Linus Tech Tips? He's still a thing, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, fucking, he did a, he did a, he did an experiment on these, basically um, compared a whole heap of different cooling solutions and pretty much like years ago, this was the best like price performance option that you could get. They're pretty cool coolers. I, I like them. Yes. Good air, air coolers. Yeah. Yeah, there's like the nothing wrong with them. Why am I doing that? Because I need to, to access the bolt holes. Oh, yes, yes. That, that, that might be handy. Yeah. <laughs> Typically works the best. So you get your you get your AM4 feet or your Intel feet, and then you've just got two screws at the bottom here. And so you do get some included thermal paste. I will probably ship this off to the customer, and I should have some opened thermal paste somewhere. Yep right here on my desk and so you can get you can get like other thermal paste for it that's quote unquote better but when they say better they're talking like you know you know point of a degree sort of better maybe one degree absolute maximum So unless every degree matters to you, which it really shouldn't, like some people, people freak out. They see they see like seventy degrees on their graphics card, and they think, "Oh shit, that's really hot, isn't it? I don't want anything catching fire." And it's like, "Yeah, okay, I understand your concern about that, but..." Your graphics card can get up to 83 degrees, and that's a lot less than, you know, like 100 degrees when these kind of things are going to start catching fire. So, oh, I've got a chip part of my lunch. <laughs> So opposite corners is the best way of, of mounting this sort of stuff.
Now you don't need to over tighten these things. Just nice even mounting pressure all round is plenty. Alrighty, so on the Cooler Master fans, it doesn't specifically say which is which, but one is a reverse fan and one is a regular fan. So just be just be mindful of which is which before you take it off, unless you have an understanding as to what each fan should look like. Got a little bit of thermal paste there. Okay, so we've got a micro ATX case here. We've got a hard drive that we need to install and a power supply. So the power supply we're installing is a new ATX 3.0 power supply with the uh, 12 plus 4 pin connector for our 40 series and beyond graphics cards. So that will be handy to have for the future, this customer might want to upgrade at some stage. And obviously when you buy an ATX3 power supply, certainly at the moment, um, they, they all come with 10 year warranties. So this can be like the, the only power supply you need for the next 10 years. Nice little thermal take bag there. Oh no, sorry, this isn't a GF3, it's just the same color box. Sorry. <laughs> I've been talking this up like it's a GF3. I'm like, hey, I'm, why is it not modular? Bum bum bum. It's just a it's just a regular power supply. I know, but they're they're yeah, way they're way more ex side. they're way more expensive though. They're way more expensive. It still doesn't make complete sense to buy one now if you're not going to use it right now. It's fine to buy them for the upgradability, right? But that's only if you've got the budget for it. If not, it doesn't make sense. And plus, if you buy a 40 series card, you'll get the adapter. Mm. So. So while I'm selling them to people who have the money and want to sort of future-proof themselves with a, with a power supply, they're certainly not essential. And um, if you've got a budget, we'll probably drop the um, the ATX3 power supply to um, get you better specs. And that's how it normally works. Sorry, I'll, I'll show you what I'm talking about so you understand why I might have had that mixed up. So the one in my right hand is a GF3 and the other one is the power supply from tonight. 
I've been looking at it like that. And I'm like, oh yeah, yep. That's a grey box, the same as this, right? Yep, yep, that, that looks right. No, no. No, no. So it is a semi-modular power supply. So we've got a couple of cables to plug in, but we don't have our CPU and our motherboard cable. They're, or, they're like automatically connected. You're gonna buy it, but what? They only have small size, extra small. I'm not extra small. Oh. I like food. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, fuck being extra small. Big bowl of pasta sounds better than being skinny. Yeah. <laughs> couldn't reach these connectors. I thought I'd be able to reach them, but apparently not. Is this like a mini ITX case or No. Just uh, a micro ITX. Oh, okay. It's pretty small. ITX only has one slot. Ah. Uh, the art says ah. So yeah, usually an ITX case will have a graphics card with riser cables. Okay, so we'll have a bag of goodies here, chuck our Wi-Fi antenna in there, chuck the Intel uh, mounting bracket and the thermal paste in there. You're going to have this bag of screws and cable ties. Do you want a puppy? Because a puppy would <laughs> Puppy? I don't know about a puppy. Standard AMD bracket. Yeah, I know.
Okay. So just did a little bit of cable managing there on the um, on the cooler. Okay, so we've got our I.O. shield installed. We've got a couple of extra fans here to go on the front. So yeah, this is probably the hardest part here, is just getting these fans on the front. But yes, if you have to screw these on, 
the front like this, you're better off doing it when you don't have anything in the case. Yeah, it's definitely a lot harder and a lot more awkward to screw them in when you've got all this other crap inside the case. Okay, so we will have to take off a couple of bolts here. This is to access our hard drive tray. Kind of slides off the bottom there. And so the obvious place to mount it is obviously inside the tray here. The way, the one that's not obvious is on the top of it. So this, this drive tray looks like it's only good for one drive. It's actually good for two drives. So when you're talking hard drives, you definitely want to have all of the screws in place. And at the bottom here, we're using these hex screws. So they've got a hex top, hexagonal that is. And then that leaves the obvious tray open there for a secondary drive. So if you want to install a second hard drive in here, you can. You won't have to remove the other hard drive to do it. Just undo those two bolts and slide out the, the tray there. Okay. And so our dust filter goes on the inside there. Just like so. And 
And then our front panel just snaps on the front there. Okay, so everything's starting to take shape. We've got most of the stuff installed in, into our case that we want. Now it's just time to get the motherboard in place. So I'm going to need a couple more offsets. Get some screws in our motherboard here. Just got a micro ATX board in a micro ATX case. So it's pretty simple stuff. It means we can just put in all of our um, all of our bolts. We don't have any cables to mount discreetly. I'm pretty happy with the airflow configuration of this of this case. However, if it were if it is a problem, I'll be able to add two extra black fans at the top there. But as always, don't like to add things just for the sake of adding them. Okay, so would you look at that, now things are starting to come together. What's up? No, she's just she's just a, like a, if you've ever had a smart dog versus a dumb dog. Like, she's on the high end of smart. Yeah. I guess 
soon as I put the, black, the um, blanket in there, she was like rolling around like a little kid. Okay. So our CPU power just comes in from up the top here. I thought that's a bad tattoo idea. What? Were you looking at you were looking at bat tattoo idea? Yes. I read it as bad tattoo idea. Oh no no. <laughs> and I read I read bad tattoo idea by story antics, not shorty antics. Yeah. I read it completely differently. I thought it was a story about a bad tattoo. <laughs> no, like the tattoo that went wrong, or I, I don't know. Something like that. Okay, so we've got three additional fans.
Alrighty, we're nearly done. Really, really close. We've plugged pretty much everything in down the bottom here. Front panel audio, our fans, our RGB, our USB. Very good. And so finally, it's our graphics card. issues with this case and this card. That fucking cool is in the way. I need more angle up this way. I could probably just fit it. Mm. Well, that's a pain in the ass. What are we going to do here? So let's start. Let's start by doing some actual measurements here. Okay, so we're thirty two. Yeah, we got room for it. We just can't fit it with that cooler. We're 33 centimeters of clearance and we need 32. So we've got enough for the card. We just can't fit it with the cooler like that. So. Okay, so
Can you come here and hold this? Okay, so it definitely fits. And the metal on these is actually pretty oh, thick. <laughs> I was going to say, I'm like, it seems like a bit of a stroppy. Mm, that is actually... It's thick for them, eh? Like, yeah. compared to what they're normally like. Normally it's like half the thickness. Yeah. Very, very thick. Okay, so basically we've got to angle this in. Because we've got just enough room. I was like, I, I looked at this, I'm like, I thought I looked at this, this is the sort of shit that I check, right? Because I've been through this crap before. Ha ha ha. Look at that. Oh, it's like half a centimetre. Yep. Half a centimetre clearance, that's, that's miles in the PC <laughs> world. Half a centimetre is like a country mile, you know? So some of you might be wondering about the thermal paste. It's okay to reapply it like this, take it off and put it back on without reapplying. As long as it hasn't heated up.
Okay. Bit of a detour there. But that is our graphics card installed in the case. So definitely, definitely one of the sort of trickier things to do. You might think that a smaller case might be might be easier. It's typically the opposite. It's typically more time consuming to do a build in a small case compared to a big case. There are some exceptions like a Leon Lee Dynamic 11 or something like that. But that's mainly because of all the fans and the fact that the customer usually wants the strimmers and all the extra stuff put onto it. There we go. That is one rig. So yeah, that's it. Looking pretty tidy. But it's one thing to look tidy and it's another thing to actually perform and function like PC. And that's kind of the name of the game here, so we're going to fire it up and see whether it posts. And so we can check in with our first PC that we were diagnosing tonight. A little bit later. So that's power on. Do I share the screen, babe? We'll need a BIOS. So in the meantime, how's this other PC? Sweet, it's got up to 74 degrees at its hottest and it's still running with 15 minutes left. Okay, look, I'm pretty happy with that. So, for this customer, his main problem was just the fact that his graphics card was dead. And unless you've got another graphics card to try out, it's a little hard to work that one out. And it's the most expensive thing in your build, so it's probably the most stressful thing to find out that it's not working properly. However, um, it happens. Things have a, things have a non-zero failure rate, as you'll hear me say, over and over again. Young fella would like kind of die inside. Yeah, but if he if he but if he if he does everything right and he's not an idiot, he'll be able to get a, a warranty yeah, repair I was refund. Say, a warranty repair because this is this is a warranty it. issue. There's nothing wrong with the card. There's no visible signs of any damage to the card. So I don't see them. Um, I don't see them rejecting the warranty claim. No, neither. But it this might is, 
it might take a while, that's the problem. Mm. Warranty issues. It's if you like, bought it within a week, that complies with what companies call a dead on arrival yeah. rule. And if the, if you return it within the week and all the packaging's there and you've got you've got a demonstrable problem, um, they you will usually just go, "Yep, no worries. That that uh, that qualifies as a dead on arrival for us. So you can just have your money back." and buy another graphics card yeah. and we're just going to send this one back for you on your behalf. So that should be what happens, but it depends where you buy it from. Mm -hmm. That's why that's why like the big retailers are so big is because they offer things like that. So people are like, "Oh yeah, sweet, I'll go through them and then if anything goes wrong, I don't have to worry about it." So going from 20, 2803 to 2806. Alrighty. No, it's not what I'm thinking. Just need to get stressed out from all the people. Okay, so we can put on our XMP profile.
Kangaroo Point Lodge. It's like oh, the border okay. of Kangaroo Point in South Brisbane. Oh, yeah. Which is where the bridge is. Oh, it's, yeah. It's got to be a really easy walking distance between us and the Ted Long and the They have parking! It's only one night, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you have to pay for parking. It's twenty dollars. Oh. Yay. Well. Two point two meters. Mm hmm. The parking limits. The height. Two point two meters. Yeah, it's fine. Can't understand you. She's taking money on the bus. You sure?
Alrighty, so. Let's get everything all set up here on this PC. It's getting pretty late. Alright, let's put down some custom icons here, so we don't make a mess of the place. And then it'll just be a pretty standard software install. We'll install gaming apps. I can't remember if this person's even using this for gaming. But we've got a 3080, so... MSI Afterburner.
Yeah. You can also avoid one of the two interesting. Hey, Fano, how are you going? It's usually going to go back to default. Some some boards have certain settings that can survive the BIOS being updated. But no, in general, it will revert everything back to um, to default settings. So if you've got a new motherboard, update the BIOS first. You'll see. I usually, unless I forget, won't change any settings in BIOS before I do a BIOS update. Okay, we're nearly done here. set up our two terabyte hard drive okay So that shouldn't have too long to go. Once it gets up to like 73%, it goes a lot faster. And so there's our two terabyte SSD, and sorry, our one terabyte SSD and our two terabyte hard drive. one I forgot. That's an important one.
body. Okay, so while that's all going on, we can go on. Oh, oh, what's going on here? MSI afterburner's not working. Okay. So we'll just adjust our graphics card pan curve. Okay, so that's what we want to see in our on-screen display. These are the toggle keys for our on-screen display. And that's the color of it. Couple cumulative updates there. So I'll run heaven here on high with no anti-aliasing. I was like, what the fuck is that sound?
What's up? Huh? Video what? Video editor redundancy. No. No. Oh. Oh, no, no, no. No. I've just been taking it easy. Yeah. Oh, this is run through. No, I've got a heap to upload. Alright, so next we'll run uh, Valley on Ultra with Max Anti aliasing. And so this is an RTX 3080 with a Ryzen 7 5700X. Yeah, the Croydon store's opened up now, which is good. Alrighty, so that was Valley there, which is a more demanding benchmark than the first one. Both the same resolution, but Valley is also run on higher settings. And then finally we'll do our 4K benchmark, and then we'll do the stress test. 
and that'll be it for the night. We started a bit later tonight, so... Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So that was our 4K benchmark. And then finally we will do our stress test. Okay. So our CPU there can get up to 95 degrees while we're doing the stress test. So the fact that it's sitting there under load, nearly 30 degrees cooler, that tells me that we're probably not gonna have any problems there. Now graphics card, so our GPU can get up to 83 degrees, our memory and hotspot can get up to 110 degrees. So not no problems there, everything's well underneath where it should be. Alright.
So yeah, well, that's where we'll probably leave it for tonight. I'm bloody tired. So thanks everyone for watching, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel, and I'll catch you all in the next video.